Hey everybody, it's Moonhorse again. Um, coming in just before this video with a little bit of information. We're talking about the University of Utah healthcare program. Um, a friend of mine is not doing well and needs you guys, if you can, to look into this program, donate if you can, help out if you can. They're looking for, you know, donations, uh, people who can do live kidney transplants, the whole thing. This is a very good cause, and it's very, very important. So if you guys have anything you can do to help, or any way that you can help at all, uh, please do. It would mean a lot to me. It would mean a lot to everybody. It's not just me. It's about everybody. Everybody's in this together, so we should all put together to actually do something. Like, if you're interested, or you have any way that you can possibly get in touch with this, or if you're in the area and you can do something to help out, you can contact them at uofulivingdonor.org. Or you can contact them at the phone number 801-587-8816. Uh, if you're interested in helping my friend specifically when you get through to somebody or you're talking to somebody, ask for Corinne C. Powell. That's who needs the help right now. It's this person who asked me to kind of help out, not just for her, but for everybody. So if you want to help out, you want to contribute to a good cause, you want to do something good, really help these people out they could use it all right so now on with the show okay so i'm gonna read another neckbeard story to you guys and it was a a couple of technical issues with this one. Um, I tried to read it after reading the entire script for B movie, so I'm in a good mood. And then Reddit decides to fuck with me. Um, apparently, the bulk of this story was written in a text window that is not word wrapped to the rest of the page. So, in order to read it properly for all of you, I had to pull it off of the page and put it on something else. I don't know why it's looking like that. But anyway, this is the story of Banana Beard by user Asthmatic Dodongo. Just a heads up, this was pretty emotionally abusive, and in case you're sensitive to that kind of thing. I'm not in it anymore, and luckily it shows how, ba shows how bad neckbeards can get. This all happened online, by the way. PSA, do not date a neckbeard slash night guy, nice guy slash incel. It's bad news. It always is. Character list. Me, 13 to 14 at the time of this story. Dated banana beard. Sugar boy, best friend, 12 to 13 at the time. She hated Banana Beard, along with everyone else, online friend. Benjamin, best friend from school, 14 to 15 at the time. Natalie, first girl I told Banana Beard about at school. The neckbeard himself, Banana Beard, 15 to 16 at the time, obsessed with bananas, ate a rotten one, and called them his pets, harassed me for nudes excessively. German, 6'3", almost 300 pounds, bloody tampon fetish, ew. Neckbeard and huge incel. Hold that thought. <coughs> Fucking shit. It's really humid. Okay, so here's the story. So it started in 2016 when I was 13 and met Banana Beard in a group chat. I thought he was pretty cool and we got along. Our meeting isn't very important, so I'll skip it. We started dating in September of 2016 when I was 13 and he was 15. I turned 14 in November and that's when the fun starts. Shortly after my birthday, he started asking me for pictures of my stomach. I'm a very self-conscious person, and I can't even change to a gym uniform in front of other people. Other girls, specifically. <clears throat> I uncomfortably did it after repeated bouts of telling him no and him begging. He would speak in this baby voice as if I was his pet. Right before Christmas 2016 is when things escalated to an extreme. He wanted to send me a dick pic. I told him absolutely not and that I didn't want to see that. I was in the mall with my dad Christmas shopping. I was leaning against a wall and my phone buzzed. I opened it, opened Google Hangouts and saw a text that read, Hey, I sent it. If you want to see it, scroll up. After that, I shoved my phone in my pocket as I was about six feet from my father who didn't know that I was in contact with anyone online. I later texted him back with a what the fuck, I said no. He told me just to scroll up to see it so I don't get surprised with it later. I said no and that was that. February of 2017, shortly after Valentine's Day, is when things turned into hell. He started harassing me for nude pictures of myself. Remember, I was 14 and he had just turned 16. He then told me that he would leave for a week whenever I'd get that time of the month because it made him want nudes. 
I was very upset so that I pretended to miss it that month so he wouldn't <clears throat> so he wouldn't leave. He later found out and got super mad and said that he couldn't trust me anymore. This guy got angry if I went with my dad to get food after school or if I talked to any of my friends. He told me to tell someone IRL so they'd convince me to send him nudes. I told this girl from my computer class, we'll call Natalie. She told me never to do it and then he's manipulating me and then I'd regret it if I ever did. I took her advice. Later in March, he started to get more abusive. I knew, he knew I had an alt account because he had my main account. I have his too because he made me have it. And he monitored it like, a not, like the Nazi government. He read me and Sugar Boy's entire private chat and interrogated me about things that were said in 2015 before I even met him. He ended up deleting our private chat. but the, ugh. And this other girl told him I wouldn't be mad. Spoiler, I was fucking livid. But that didn't happen until the summer, and I think it's, but I think it still relates. March 21st, I was calling him, and he was getting very forceful about the picture thing, saying, do it, because he wanted pictures of down there. I ended up crying about it and said no. He made me cry ten, more than ten times. He even begged me to stop crying for two minutes and asked, so will you do it? And eventually he left the call to my pleasure, and... I went to get off Hangouts to get a lovely surprise to the caption, have fun, and he sent me a non-consensual dick pic. He did three of those, and I only saw two. The third had a fucking smiley face on it. It was horrifying and very small. He wanted me to delete that account, and I didn't want to, and things reached a boiling point on April 1st. It was a huge fight where he insulted me, and I never bent over my account. You see... I like dark humor, and he hated it, so he told me I couldn't make any jokes like Nazi jokes and other dark humor and whatnot. I made jokes on there, and this was my personal shit, so it's to be private. He threatened to kill himself if I didn't give it to him. He also threatened to break up with me. He was bluffing, and whenever he pulled these threats in the future, I'd get excited and then disappointed when he said he was bluffing. He ended up breaking up, quote-unquote, with me and told Sugar Boy, and she told him to kill himself if he's that useless to the world and an abusive etc he tried to kill himself using axe body spray and failed how the fuck do you try to kill yourself with axe body spray a bit before all this went down i told sugar about him and what he was doing to me and asked her if i if she could convince me to and how he asked her if she could convince me to send him nudes of myself and what okay Hold on, I have to read that sentence again. And what he was doing, because he asked her if she could convince me to send him pictures of myself, and she agreed, probably thinking it was an innocent thing. She was horrified over what he was doing. Later on, other friends I told said it was the worst first relationship they've ever witnessed. For some reason, I stayed with him. I just had faith in him that he'd change. Things kept like this until I broke up with him for the first time in August. In May, I went to see my old friend. And he made me call him there even though I hadn't seen her in five years and got super salty when I left to go hang out with her. We weren't even talking, it was so awkward. He still persistently asked for nudes. I was so sick of his shit. Countless friends were begging me to break it up break it off with him. He actually manipulated me into sending him a picture of me in a sports bra and blackmailed me excessively with it. He got extremely sexist and called called me woman and said that I was a horrible girlfriend even though I did nothing to him he said i gobbled up his money because he bought me steam games as a gift and i was too broke to get him anything back he thought i was transgender because i prefer wearing boys clothes and he called me a boy he thought i was cheating on him with everyone and told me after i dumped him to stop dating a boy i wasn't even dating and to come back to my real boyfriend him he also told me to break my Nintendo Switch that I got for Christmas that year because he couldn't get one. He was also very disrespectful to his mother, called her a bitch, said fuck you to her. Benjamin wanted to hack him because he hated him so much and wanted to destroy his computer. He also tried to force me to delete my Hamilton stuff because he said I liked it more than him. I first broke up with him in August because I got so sick of him and he got super salty and begged me to take him back and said that he'd change. I relented, and eventually he was just as bad as before, so I broke up with him again shortly after our one year in September, which he said I ruined somehow. 
Also, I just remembered he had a kink for bloody tampons and begged me to send him a picture of mine, which I said, fuck no, that's disgusting. After the second breakup, he begged me to take him back, saying his second chance didn't count or some bullshit. After a week, like a dumbass, I relented and took him back. He fucked it up, of course, and was like, I was like, fuck this, and dumped him again a month later. I never took him back again. Also, in his last chance, I changed my password and turned off my online status, and he got super angry telling me to turn on your status, you whore, or some shit, and he did the same about my password. Shortly after I dumped him, he asked me for nudes again, saying, we aren't together anymore, and I'll never see that stuff anyway, so why not do it? And I told him, fuck, you're sick, go away. Luckily, he left me alone after that for a while. After December, he got super angry and commanded me to pay him back for the Steam games and said that I didn't pay him by January 3rd or some shit, that he leaked the pics that I did send him. I said them... What? I said them already. All over the internet. I managed to scrape together the money and paid him back. He left me alone after that. As of now, July 2018, we're actually friends again. My friends don't like that. I'm friends with him, but he felt really bad about everything he did. And he actually changed. I'll never date Banana Beard again, but he was a good friend. We're on good terms, and I don't talk to him a lot, however. Edit, friends is very loose. I try to talk to him as little as possible. Wow. That, yeah, that is absolutely the story of a very abusive relationship. Um... (laughs) <laughs> I've been in a few. I've seen that kind of behavior. The manipulation, the lying, the screaming, the fighting over things that don't have anything to do with anything. I remember that shit. That was... <sighs> One of my first serious relationships was like that. And the only reason I say it was serious is because it lasted a long time. And it wasn't until looking back on it in retrospect I realized that I didn't really have much of a choice. Um... I was not allowed to break up with this person. If I did, she tried to kill herself. Or she said she did. I don't really know if that was true. There was a lot of back and forth with that one. Uh, Again, this is, you know, like this person. uh, Asthmatic Dodongo, I believe is the username. Again, thanks for the story. Um, I, too, dated mostly online in the very early days because I live in the middle of fucking nowhere And, yeah, you don't exactly meet people around here who are really nice. But anyway, um, yeah, that was kind of how that started, and it was a very abusive relationship. I didn't realize it until later, um, when basically she said things that should have been a warning sign. Like, the first, one of the reasons we first started talking is because, again, like this story, there was a chat group. I knew some people. She was in it. I was talking to some people about music, um... She said something about liking some of the metal bands that I was into, and I was like, oh, cool, let's let's talk. It wasn't until, like, months later she, she basically just said, like, yeah, I lied. I don't actually know who any of those people are. It's like, okay, so one of the few things we had in common from the first conversation was a lie, so why? And basically it all comes out, I say basically a lot, I'm sorry about that. Um, it kind of all came out that the reason... She even started going out with me is because she was mad at her current boyfriend and wanted to leave him, but could not be single. She had like a thing against being single. So the only way she could transfer from one boyfriend to another is to cheat on the current boyfriend with another boyfriend and then leave them for this person. She had a lot of fucking issues. I found that out the hard way. There was a lot of fucking abuse in that relationship. I spent a lot of time thinking every single thing I ever did was wrong. And how every part of me was absolutely incorrect all the time. There were instances where I was not allowed to wear certain things, talk to certain people, or even act a certain way. Basically, I had to put on a fake persona anytime I spoke to her. And still, every single time, she made me feel like it was my fault that everything was wrong. Um, We were together for about four years. And once a year, every year, she cheated on me that I started referring to as my anniversary gift. Um, I'd buy her an anniversary present. She'd sleep with someone else. So I eventually was just like, I'm done. This can't go on like this. Um, I had pretty much started to clock out of the whole relationship whenever she once uh, accused me of the most insane thing I've ever been accused of. Um, 
Now, I've been accused of a lot of weird shit online. I've had a lot of crazy people say that I do horrible things who, like, don't know anything about me. Um, I've been called a neckbeard, which is really funny. And you only read stories about neckbeards because you are one. Ah, uh, yes, that is the reason anybody reports on anything. Because you are one. I don't understand your justification for that, but all right. Uh, um, so, I've, I've heard stupid shit like that all the time. But this is honestly the most insane thing I've ever been accused of. Like I said, I've been accused of being a misogynist, which I'm not. I've been accused of being a racist, which there's no basis of. And no, I'm not. Um, I've been accused of being a neckbeard, which no, I'm not. Um, I shouldn't have to dispute these things. You, you people should already know. Um, so... But those aren't the craziest thing. I'm burying the lead really hard here. Those aren't the craziest things I've ever been accused of. She accused me of cheating on her. Wait for it. It gets better. Not just cheating on her. No, sir. See, right around that time was when they started doing television spots for... I believe it was uh, My Chemical Romance's second album. And, f like, telling people, you know, go online, look up this uh, fucking music video i don't even remember what music video it was but they clipped from the music video and i was like that looks pretty neat i, I kind of like their style i guess i'll look it up i had never done that before and i'd never seen tv spots for a music video like commercials for a band commercials for a music video i'd never seen that before so i was like well that's pretty weird um i mean i like the guy's hair this is kind of cool i guess i'll look it up i like the style i like the kind of like weird tim burtony this is Halloween kind of bullshit that was going on. So I was like, yeah, I'll Google it. And I told her about that. When the commercial came on, I think like the second or third time, I was like, yeah, I should probably go Google that. It's, it's in the computer at that time was in the other room because we had one of those things where like your computer is in the family room. Ugh. I don't know how many of you actually remember that. Um, so, yeah, I was like, fuck it. I'll give it a shot. So as soon as I said that while on the phone with her... There was this long pause, because I basically was just like, Ben looks pretty cool, I kind of like this guy's outfit, I'm going to look it up. That's pretty much all I said. So there's this long pause, and then I swear to God, I thought for a second, I heard this sound, and I was like, are you okay? And she didn't reply, and I was like, are you crying? Because it sounded like that, and I was like, what's, what's wrong? Like, what, like, I don't understand, what's, what's got you upset? Like, did I say something? Did I do something? And then she comes out with the strangest thing I've ever been accused of. She says, and I quote, You're going to cheat on me with him, aren't you? Yes, with the man on TV I've never met, I am absolutely going to have sexual relations. How high are you right now? I just need to know. Uh, <laughs> just on a scale to one to holy fucking shit, you're delusional. I just need to know. So... <laughs> Yeah, when I tell people, I don't talk about my past relationships a lot, but when I tell people, like, some of my exes were crazy, I don't mean, like, the way that neckbeards say things, like, mm, women are crazy, that eh, bitch is crazy, meh. No, I mean, like, you should probably actually seek uh, psychiatric help. That is not, normal people do not do that. Like, I'm legitimately concerned for my well-being right now while I'm around you, and you should totally talk to somebody. This is... Whoa, dude. Um, and I remember taking a quiz that like a friend of mine posted a while back, and it's one of those things like, "Are you a misogynist? Take this quiz." That was the only qu like question on that that I had to mark yes for. It's like, have you ever called you one of your exes crazy? And I was like, yeah, but she was like legitimately crazy. Like, not you know that girl's crazy. No, more like we the jury find the defendant guilty of ment of uh, <laughs> innocent by reason of mental defects. <laughs> So she's like, yeah, that kind of crazy. The kind where you think you might get stabbed in the middle of the night. On more than one occasion, that was a thing. Um, so yeah, that was uh, a thing that happened. It was weird. I've had a couple more really fucked up issues like that with relationships. I'm, that's also the reason why Moon Horse is kind of weird about things. But... Yeah, this kind of this story brought back a lot of uh, a lot of memories of that, a lot of really fucked up memories of when you're very young and then you realize things as you get older. Um, 
and you don't realize them when you're young. Kind of like, uh, I'm going to tell you guys a story. I shouldn't tell those guys this story. This is a fucked up story. Uh, but I am anyway, because this, this is one of those things. So, this person, asthmatic Dodongo, will, thankfully has realized right now, relatively early on, that yes, this was an abusive relationship. And now you know a bunch of warning signs. Granted, they're going to be tricky, and sometimes it's hard to navigate around them when people you actually like start having these warning signs, but you need to know them and you need to respond to them. Because ignoring them only leads to really, really bad situations. Uncle Moonhorse can testify. Um, but it's only now that, like... We didn't have this kind of conversation when I was younger. Um, I mean, there were probably people having these kinds of conversations, like warning people about this kind of stuff. They did not talk to me. They did not talk to me or anybody I knew. And it was only years later that I looked back and go like, oh yeah, that really was like a deeply abusive relationship. That might explain why I have a lot of trust issues and things like that. Why I'm scared of confrontation and don't like to talk to people about certain things. That kind of explains a lot. Absolutely. But I also remembered this story because there was an episode of, I think, um, oh, it was one of the episodes of, like, I was either Oni Plays or Super Mega where they were talking about this guy who sent Matt some pictures when he was younger. And, like, it turned into, like, this weird thing. Um, so, basically, I kind of related. I'll explain everything in this story. Because you can look up that. It's a very short segment, but they kind of talk about it. But I can't, I remember this. I remember this happening to me, too. I remember being, like maybe 14 on on the computer and talking to somebody I was just talking to because that was back when you could go into a good old yahoo chat which is completely unmoderated and filled with god knows what which is the reason why you know uh what's his name chris hansen would run those to catch predator segments using that exact chat program every time they would show clips from the screen it was like and this is what we were doing when we were chatting with this the the uh, criminal and it's just like yeah it's yahoo chat I know what that is. Uh, very rarely it's AOL Instant Messenger because I don't think they really had fucking chat rooms on that, but Yahoo absolutely did. Nobody monitored them. I'm surprised Yahoo still has a business because of this. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I remember being in one of those and talking to some because I remember being like 14 and it's like, this girl likes me. This, this girl's talking to me. She seems really nice and, and she's just like getting really flirty and I, oh, you know, I'm like a stupid fucking teenager. Just being like, oh my god, this is so cool. And that girl sent me pictures, quote-unquote, and it turned out they were really kind of, let's say, risque. And it was only then, looking back on it, I realized, wow, that was a pedophile. That was a pedophile sending you nudes. That was a pedophile who wanted you to jerk your little ding-dong to pictures because she's a pedophile. That's what she did. It's like, oh. Oh, fuck. Oh, holy fuck. <laughs> moments like that that you don't think about because at the time they don't really seem that bad because you're not thinking about it at the time you're a stupid kid and then when you think about them later and somebody else puts it in fucking context they're like yeah this thing happened and I was like this and somebody's like because really that the conversation was Matt talks about some guy in a chat group or something sent him just random porn and was like what do you think of that and he's like well that's just really good and he was like maybe 13 and without missing a beat Julian just goes yeah he was a pedophile uh, yeah, he was, he was a pedophile. He was grooming you. That's what they do. Uh, she's like, oh my god, that happened to me. Holy shit. <laughs> and yeah, I remember like talking to this person off and on for a while, and eventually it got to the point where it was just like, you know, so where do you live? Like, what, what's your, like, what state are you in? And stuff like that. And after that, I was like, I gotta go. And I didn't fucking talk to him anymore because I got really creeped out. Yeah, that was legit a thing at one time where it's just like this that, that, that was a pedophile wow um so yeah warning signs kids learn them love them they will save your life this episode's gone on for a little while i'm gonna end it now because this is this is mostly a story about this person and then some insight into moon source life this kind of turned into a weird little podcast i'm sorry about that i've been drinking a little bit and i kind of want to tell stories i need to go to bed it's very late Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. You can like, comment, subscribe. That'd be, that'd be awesome. And there's a... Songo has informed me that there is a notification bell 
which will notify you whenever I upload new videos. If I was anyone else, I would say that this bell is completely useless. However, because I upload at random, every day at a random time, like the idiot motherfucker I am, you might need to click that because I don't there's necessarily know when I can upload. Sometimes it's 7.30 in the morning, sometimes it's almost 8 o'clock at night. Because my life is insane. Anyway, thanks for watching. Also, there's a Patreon. Almost forgot that. Kinda need to talk about the Patreon. It's a thing. I'm gonna do a podcast. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe later tonight. Who knows? I don't fucking know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Okay, bye.